Impact. Impact was a, was a good show for the seven or eight of you who watched it. Wouldn't it be awesome if uh, the 4th of July could do nothing to impact the ratings, but Sharknado killed them? It's possible. It's possible. Um, but I, I bet the rating will be pretty much what it always is. I'm sure it will. I had a dream last night, by the way, that Craig joined an MMA team. And how did that turn out? I don't know. Craig Proper. Yeah, this this seems like a horrible idea. Yeah, it was a really weird dream, Unless obviously. You, well, I hear those uh, MMA fighters sometimes have some powerful medicine. But... What are you trying to say, Vince? Let's, let's do impact. Bully Ray opened the show with a promo, saying he was very upset that his wife had gone and gotten engaged to another man. Very upset. All the aces and eights came down to the ring. Billy Ray warned Chris Saban, do not cash in your X title for a shot at my world title. If you do, I will hurt you very badly. He said the main event mafia had challenged his game to a fight in Louisville next week. He declined this fight. But the main event mafia interrupted. Kurt Angle had some very crazy sunglasses on. Taz suggested that he had bought them at a gas station. It's entirely possible. Angle said that Ray was going to defend his title next week, and they were going to take out all the members of Bully Ray's gang, so it was a one-on-one match. And then Sting said, we will be adding a fifth member to our crew tonight. A lot of factions. There are a lot of factions. Faction action here on Impact. You actually said that, didn't you? (laughs) No one's ever said that before. (laughs) In the history of wrestling, I've never heard that phrase, but now I'm going to popularize it. Faction action. So uh, the theme of the night, at least from the uh, in-ring stuff, was uh, all the guys in the Bound for Glory series had a battle bowl. Faction action, by the way, will result in an overreaction on the board. That may happen. So they had the, uh, the every guy's name in the hopper, and they, they drew random tag matches. And uh, only 12 guys, so only three matches. But then the winning team in each one was then entered into a Royal Rumble at the end. So You'll be shocked at some of these random teams, everybody. Are you suggesting this may not have been on the up and up? Yes. Okay. Outright suggesting that. <laughs> Jeff Hardy and Joseph Parks versus AJ Styles and Samoa Joe. First of all, just the visual of homeless AJ and Joe Parks in the ring together. It's very strange. Joe Park is... Uh, Did I call him Joe Parks? Probably. I've been doing this... I did throughout this entire report. I called him Joe Parks. What's wrong with me? <laughs> You're an idiot. Apparently. Joe Park has been doing this gimmick now well over a year. Yes. It's time that he starts getting a little better at wrestling. Oh, that too. He it's ended up in some sort of spot where he, he forgot something or he didn't know how to do something. I forget what it was. And it was like, really? After a full year? Yeah. Well, he it, also, I don't really blame Joe Park. I blame more like, this was the second taping in Las Vegas and people were tired. Absolutely no heat for his comeback whatsoever. Well. Absolutely dead. A, is is he's the clown of the tournament. The reason he's in this tournament is because someone has to come in last. That's why he and Jay Bradley were in there. So, you got this match, and it's four essentially baby faces. And uh, so they got the heat on Jeff, but no one really cares because people like Joe and AJ, and they were tired. And then the guy who gets the hot tag is, in fact, the clown of the group. And not like the clown people really love to see. He's just a clown. So he came in and made his big, goofy comeback, and nobody cared. And then he got a hit with a forearm and choked out, and AJ and Joe won. It was a clunky match. Where's Abyss? He shows up sporadically. <laughs> Like, what happened to his career? Like, the actual Abyss character. He he shows up sporadically and wrestles once in a while. Yeah, like once a month. Not less than that. Less than that, once every two months now. Three or four times a year, yeah. Like, like what in storyline is going on with Abyss? He got beat up by uh, Bully Ray. Yes. And now he's he's made, like, four appearances back. He won the TV title, which we'll never see again. Yes. And I don't even know where he is. On a, Wait, did I he? Mean, yeah. All right. Is he? Did he like come into some money, or he's, or he's just training? Are we supposed to all believe that him and Joe Park are the same person? Which, if that's the case, why can Joe Park still not wrestle? Why doesn't Joe Park just cut himself before every match? <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, let's go there. All right. Uh, next tag match was Jay Bradley and Hernandez against Mr. Anderson and Magnus. So by the sheer look of the draw, you had Magnus, the main event mafia guy, teaming with Mr. Anderson, the Aces and Eights guy. Shocking. Yep. Anderson refused to tag in, so Magnus had to go to go it alone. And uh, he made his own comeback, got cut off, and pushed the two dudes together and rolled up Hernandez and pinned him. 
So uh, Magnus, uh, Magnus beat two guys by himself. I'm all for needing to make new stars. I'm all for pushing new guys. I'm even all for uh, Magnus in a lot of ways. I think he's he's pretty good. But tonight on this show, two things. Number one, he still has moments where he looks really green. And uh, he also only got a decent reaction here, and then he only got a decent reaction when he won the Battle Royal. He's yeah. not getting like a, a big superstar reaction. I, I, I don't know if people are... Uh, uh, a little resentful. Maybe resentful is not the right word, but you know when a guy is being shoved down your throat. I don't know if it's that or just again it could have been just a bad crowd after after two nights at the uh, in in Vegas, 118 degree weather. But uh, I think that if if this guy is going to win the Bound for Glory series and potentially win the title, then I think that he needs to be uh, working with Bobby Roode every single solitary night. Uh, in 15-minute matches yeah. from now until Bound for Glory because he's, uh, he's got some ground he needs to pick up here. I noticed it tonight. And keep in mind, this show was edited. Yeah. Will Wheaton tweeted five hours ago, we haven't seen a shark or a tornado for almost 15 minutes. This is bullshit. Mikey was watching uh, Sharknado. Should talk to him about it. I will. We had a fantastic backstage segment. Austin Aries and Bobby Roode were hanging out together. Aries was pissed at Roode because Roode had not interfered last week and Aries had lost the X title. Roode was pissed at Aries because Aries had not interfered in any of his matches and he was 0 for 3 in the Mount for Glory series. Bad Influence watched, waltzed in. said, we're the last four guys left. It'll be us, Bad Influence, against you two, the Dirty Heels. Yes. And he called them this like three or four times, so that is apparently their actual name. Austin Aries and Bobby Roode, the Dirty Heels. And they ran their mess for a while and they left, and after they left, the Dirty Heels mentioned the Bad Influence talked really fast. It's I a fact. I love this. And then it got better. So, the uh, you know, there's only four guys left. Daniels comes out first. He always stretched to the ring. This week he did an extended dance number. I don't need to see Fandango dance ever again. I don't need to see Brodus Clay dance ever again. But I want to see Chris Daniels dancing in my ring every week. It was awesome. But, of course, they drew the name. and It was not Kazarian. He was teaming with Austin Aries. Oh, no. Oh, no, indeed. So it was Aries and Daniels against Kazarian and Rude. It was a tired crowd. It was four heels. It did not get a lot of heat. And I don't care. This was a great, great, great pro wrestling match. These guys are like uh, the dying days of Talela Championship Wrestling. Just finding a different way to work with the same people every time. <laughs> Isaac and I. Yes. And you and uh, the bodyguard. The, the bodyguard tried to find 95 different combinations. Yes. To stretch our feud out for a year and a half so none of us had to work with anybody else. Yes. That's what this is. And it I, is. I'm all for these guys doing this. Because <laughs> it entertains me. So the story of this was... Aries and Rude, though partners, are not friends. They have no problem meeting each other up. But K Kaz and Daniels are best friends. And they did not want to fight each other at, at any cost. So they uh, avoided getting in the ring together the entire match. Let's get into the finish. And uh, Kazarian goes for a pin on Aries. But Daniels has to run in and break up the pin. He pulls Kaz off, and Kaz is upset with him. The match continues a bit. and uh, How did Daniels explain this? I forgot who my partner was. He may have said that. He had some sort of explanation to try to, uh, uh, try to, uh, to, to appease Kaz. Appease his friend, yes. yes. So uh, the match continues, and Aries throws Kaz into the corner and hits him with the corner dropkick to the face. And he grabs him the brain buster. And Daniels is watching this, and he thinks, oh no, my best friend is about to be dropped on his head and killed. So he weaves in, and he tags himself in. So now Daniels and Kazarian are the legal men. Aries is pissed, but he's been tagged out, so he goes to the apron. Daniels is saying, don't worry, it'll be okay. And he turns to his fallen friend, Kaz, and he goes over to tend him and make sure he's okay. But Kaz, still blinded by the corner drop kick, immediately grabs Daniels, small packages him, and pins him. Yes. As Aries tries desperately to get in the ring and trips yes. on the bottom rope. Yes. He had, to, he, had to, he had to act like he could not get in the ring in time, and this, is, this resulted in a trip. All four of these men were awesome. This match ruled the earth. 
This was uh, this was awesome. So uh, Rude was happy because his team won. Aries was pissed. His team lost. They just left. Daniels got over it, and he raised Cass's hand and said he was going to win. Thumbs up for all four of you. Hulk met with Brooke. Told her to quit hanging out with Bully Ray. No mention of her engagement. Aces and Aces in a meeting backstage. They were voting on whether Mr. Anderson or Doc should be the new vice president. And it came down to the last vote, which was Knox. He toasted beers with Doc, and then he voted Anderson. What a dick. So Mr. Anderson is your Aces and Aces vice president. I'm sure you're all thrilled. I was just watching this thing, and it was kind of like, uh, you know, who cares? Exactly. Why should I, the viewer at home, care who the vice president of the Aces and Aces is? Yeah, I, uh, I mean, what does the guy get? More strippers? <laughs> More bikes. Why was this, why was this necessary for a vote? Like, what, what does the vice president even do? Does he have a role? He just gets to be vice president. Uh, eh. I guess. I don't know. I mean, does he get a special vest? That's reasonable to, to assume. Or at least a, at least a, a badge. Hmm. Veep. Gail, Kim, and Terrence Terrell had a ladder match. Yeah, they did. They had a hell of a ladder match. I have seen many, many ladder matches crazier than this. But I don't know if I've ever seen one that made this much sense. I can't tell you how many ladder matches I've seen where guys take two ladders... And they set them up in such a way as the only reason you would ever set a ladder up this way is because you want to do a move off it or into it or on it or something. Yeah. These girls found a way to introduce multiple ladders and set them up in elaborate contraptions, but it always seemed like they were just trying to get a ladder and grab their grand contract and win. Very well put together. Uh, yeah, by the standards of ladder matches, like I say, I have seen crazier, but they did not... It's not like there was uh, no risks taken. Taryn did a spear through the ropes under the ramp. She tried an RKO off a ladder bridge, but got thrown off and took a nasty splat into the corner. And Gail put her in the figure four in the ladder. It looked like it sucked. Taryn grabbed her by the head and hung her from the top of the ladder. That also looked like it sucked. So eventually, uh, Taryn puts Gail in a dragon sleeper. But while she's in the hold and they're over by the side of the ring, Gail is able to tie Taryn's hair in the ropes. And then when Gail breaks free, Taryn is trapped. And by the time she's able to free herself, Gail has already gotten to the top of the ladder and grabbed the contract. This was also really, really good. Not as good as the pay-per-view match, but it was really, really good. So it's uh, Gail versus Mickey for the title at some point. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't sold on this match early on because uh, Taryn was... Uh, Taryn still... I mean, you know, she's Taryn Terrell. She should not run the ropes. Yeah. It's, um, it's not Velvet Sky level, but... It was a lot of rope running and a lot of... Uh, just her grappling at the beginning of the match was... Uh, her uh, lockup needs work. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Match was very good. Uh, they did a hell of a job. It was... When it was over, I was like, well, it's fun. That was not as dangerous as their pay-per-view match. And then I watched some of the re replays, and it was like, meh. They nearly killed themselves. I cannot believe uh, Terrence Terrell actually put her face at risk with, like, ladder spots. Like, take this face-first bump into the ladder. I know she got two hands up there, but still. Yeah. Things can go wrong. Hair tied to the ropes was a little bit wacky. Mostly because I've... I don't know. You ever tried to tie a hair in a knot? <laughs> Can't say I have. Hmm. Joey Mercury is much better wrestler than Terrence Terrell, and he like lost his eye in a ladder spot. That's right. So that's why I was worried. Sting and Angle were backstage bragging about how Magnus and Joe were one and two in the Battle for Glory series, and then they got a phone call from the fifth guy. <laughs> so we had the Royal Rumble. They had a lot of time for six dudes in a Rumble match, and really it was pretty uneventful. The highlight for me was at one point Taz was uh, talking about how AJ had some kind of plan that was going on, and he explained that AJ's actions were, quote, predetermined. And Mike Tanay blew his gasket. <laughs> he just completely flipped at this. So I laughed. So they wrestled around for a while, and guys got clothes lined out, and finally came down to Rude and Magnus, and now it was pinfall or submission, and they traded submission holds for a while, and they did some roll-ups, and Magnus won. And, uh, 
It did not seem like a big victory. It was not terribly exciting. It was mostly just because the crowd really didn't uh, didn't care. But I yeah. like I liked him and and Rude. That was it was okay. it was fine. The, the 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 I hate battle royals. I hate Royal Rumbles. I mean Royal Rumble. The actual Royal Rumble is always kind of fun because it's intricately scripted. Yeah. But this was a Royal Rumble that was just like it's a battle royal. New guy out every here and there. Do some spots. Get thrown out. But uh, it comes down to the last two guys, it becomes a singles match. And, and Rude and Magnus actually had a pretty good singles match. And uh, Rude tried hard to get the dude over. And, uh, you know, it was all right. It was a good cradle finish. But the crowd just like, eh, they watched it. Yeah. It, it, like I said, this was, this was not uh, Daniel Bryan and company beating the Shield, let's say that. No. This was a mid-carter being another mid-carter. And it also uh, begs the question, now that Magnus has approximately 1,000 points, Yes. the only thing I can figure, uh, and somebody had suggested this, is that uh, like right now he's so far ahead that it's impossible for him to lose or it would be very difficult, especially if he keeps having matches. So either now he goes on a massive losing streak, which is not how you get a guy over. No. Or they're going to have to have like... Uh, Ace and eights kills him. That's actually entirely possible. And so everyone else is getting closer and closer and closer, and and he deserves his chance, but he's having to forfeit all these matches. And uh, and maybe he comes back at the end and gets just enough points to be in the final four or something. He has to do something. But, uh, yeah, otherwise it's just like, you know, he'll win with 9,000 points. No drama. I don't think that's going to happen. Well, it's uh, the drama is not who's number one and who's number four. Because the four guys, as I recall... That's right, it does go yeah. in the final four. So, and it's good to get a lot of points. It means you're in for sure. But there's really no difference between being number one and number four. So, anyway, the injury angle still makes sense. Especially because then you get the idea of, like, he, he he's undefeated or whatever, but he has to come back to the end and wrestle on one leg to, yeah. to, to qualify. That's that's a great story right there. Well, hopefully that's where they go. Yeah. Main event angle was Hogan calling out Saban to turn over his X-belt. And uh, Saban talked about growing up as a kid watching Hulk on TV, dreaming about being world champion like Hulk. He's about to pass his belt over when Bully Ray came out, warned him again not to cash it in, so he was going to hurt him real bad and stuff. And Chris Saban, since he came back, I've talked about how his babyface promos have been lacking. I have not been blown away. Chris Saban cut a great babyface promo here. I thought they both cut an awesome promo. Well, Bully Ray always does. Bully Ray's promo about how, uh, you know, if you do this, I'm going to, uh, to kill you, mm -hmm. I thought was exceptional. Uh, he, Bully Ray always cuts good promos. This was Saban's best promo, probably his best serious promo of his career. So he was talking about how he is not afraid of Bully Ray. He'd beaten him before. He had pinned Bray in Team 3D's retirement match. He was the only guy to ever kick out of Team 3D. So on July 18th in uh, uh, Louisville, I think it was, that's the night I'm going to stand over you and I'm going to be the TNA World Champion. And he said that and he handed his belt to Hulk and, and that's that. So uh, Ray said, now you're fighting my family. And his gang came out. But then the main event mafia came out on the stage and they introduced their new member, Rampage Jackson. Yeah. Rampage Jackson? And the main event mafia. That's right. I guess we'll see. He just is mean. He swings a chain. Is that the gimmick? They call him the heavy hitter. <laughs> well, he's a, he's a heavy Legit. hitter. Legit. <laughs> That's true. Hopefully they can get a bunch of dates on him. I don't know how it works. When I don't you're know what they have planned for him. Rampage Jackson. That was a pretty good show. It's a pretty good show. I don't know if it beat uh, Sharknado, Sharkzilla, but uh, yeah, the Taron Gale ladder match was good. Daniels, Aries, Rude, and Kazarian was all good. Gauntlet finish was good, and the uh, the promos were very good. So overall, a thumbs up for Impact. I missed last week's show. I still have no idea what happened. Did you ever watch it? I never did. No, hmm. I know the big angle was uh, with. Uh, Saban and Aries and Manic. It sounded stupid. There was no explanation here for why T.G. Perkins just put a mask back on and changed his name. <laughs> I did like on this show the uh, the Hogan Brooke thing where she's in the back with Hogan acknowledging her marriage, or not acknowledging the marriage. He did that earlier on the show, but Hogan's asking her about bully and she doesn't want to talk about bully. And he's bugging her about bully, and finally she says, "Dad, I'm trying to do my goddamn job here." So why don't we leave my personal life, have that start when this show ends? <laughs> it's like, yes! Jesus, Hulk! All I can do is breathe. You have... How many hours are in a goddamn week? 
168 hours in a week, and the two hours you've got to talk to Brooke about this fucking problem are Thursdays from 9 to 11? Drop it! So, yeah. Brooke was actually good in this segment. Sure. Had to be getting ready for the two-headed shark attack uh, replay on Spike. Wouldn't it be funny if two-headed shark attack beat Brooke's segment here? Yes. Yes, it would. Very possible. All right, then. Man. This is the destination. What, huh? Go on. Oh, this is the Destination X show. Destination X show. This is not a pay-per-view anymore. They put it on TV. Came off like a uh, pretty big-time show with a pretty newsworthy main event. It opened, well, actually, first it opened with a video of all the random exhibition dudes they had fighting for the title. And then a really good video recapping Chris Sabin's entire life. Uh, he was fighting against Bully Ray in a gang tonight. And this is a really, really good video that probably should have been, should have been a last week show. What, uh, when you do this show when you're at your house, where are you at right now, Vinny? And what are you wearing? I have, I'm sitting on my couch. I'm wearing exactly what I'd be wearing if I was over at your place. I'm wearing a t-shirt and shorts. <laughs> so you haven't changed your clothes in a week? Well, it's a different t-shirt and shorts. But I see, I now. see. So you're sitting on your couch? Yeah. Yeah. You 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 you, you often sound like you're you're tucked in the bed. <laughs> Under the covers, head on the pillow. I was just checking. All right. It was a very good opening video. It was excellent. It was. It should have been a last week's show. Um Jerry Boras was doing commentary with Mike Tanay. Neither of them knew where Taz was. And in fact Taz was out on the show. Did he get cut? Well, uh, that's a good question. I uh, There were a couple of people that I talked to that had absolutely no idea where Taz was or what was going on. And uh, I was also told that it's an angle. So I don't think he was cut. I don't think he quit. In fact, I think he just re-signed a new deal. I wouldn't be surprised if it came out that, like, I don't know, he was driving the truck or something like that. But uh, I believe that Taz will will be back. Bobby Ray came out for a promo. He ran down his mess with Saban, talked about taking over TNA and how the gang was never going to lose. Called out Brooke. So he wanted to talk to his wife. She came out. She called him Mark. Said she was ready to move on. He said she could move on when he said it was okay. He was showing off his ring. Neither of them actually mentioned that she had gotten engaged to an NFL player. Um, they just mentioned that she wanted to leave. Holster came out. He was pissed. He said enough was enough, brother. He led Brooke backstage. And they said that they were still married. He would never give her a divorce, just like he would never lose his world title. At this point, Kurt Angle appeared on the screen with the rest of the main event mafia. And they promised that Ray was going to lose the world title in a fair fight. And Rampage Jackson, everyone's sitting there in suits except Rampage, who's wandering around in whatever Rampage wears and swinging his chain and my thing is, what is Rampage making for these impact shows? You probably don't even want to know. You know, I, I uh, sometimes there will be something on Raw that um, that they they got the idea from Impact, and I know people don't like to believe that anyone in WWE actually watches Impact, but they do. And uh, I was talking to somebody there tonight, and they had an idea. And since they've already taped the second episode of of Impact for next week's show. And they've already made the announcement for the the bully Saban rematch. Unless like the the spoilers that we have are incomplete and they're missing a detail, it doesn't appear that they did this. But I thought this was a great idea. They said what they should do is that since Saban won the title, Hulk Hogan would would say that Bully Ray was never getting a rematch nor another shot at the title again, unless he agreed to sign. Brooks divorce papers and that's how they could get out of this storyline and I thought well that's brilliant and then it appears that they just announced on the second episode that they're just going to do a rematch so apparently that's out the window <laughs> yeah well you know things happen they showed Austin Aries winning the world championship at Destination Next last year if you missed it that was a great match they interviewed Bobby Roode who lost that match he said that that was a fluke so even though he was scoreless in the Battle of the Warriors series this year, he was going to win the whole thing and then get his belt back. 
and they show the leaderboard. Magnus is out in front to a comical degree. His, his lead over the rest of the field is ridiculous. 30 points. He has, he has 49 points. Nobody else even has 20. I believe Joe Park has minus 10. So, coincidentally, on the uh, anniversary of their title match, it was Bobby Roode versus Austin Aries in the Mountain Glory Series. Uh, I'll start with the bad news. Austin Aries always has had, or he's had a beard for the past, I don't know how long. He shaved off the mustache, and he still has the mutton chops and the soul patch. It looks so bad. I think he's had this terrible look. look. I think he's had this look here uh, and there, but it sucks. It's really, really bad. Uh, the good news is this match was fantastic. There's Since when did mutton tremendous. chops come oh. back, by the way? Is it because of that fucking Wolverine movie? Why are mutton chops popular? Uh, that's actually not That's not the worst explanation I've heard. Is it the, the, was it the Lincoln heard. movie? Is there is there a movie that I can I can blame this on? It's, it's a horrible look. People have the temerity to make fun of my haircut and then parade around in mutton chops. I mean, seriously. Yeah. So, this match is awesome. They went back and forth a million times. They countered everything. It, it looked like they'd wrestled uh, about 500 times and uh, knew exactly what each guy was going to do. It was, it was just excellent, excellent, excellent stuff. And finally, Aries, uh, Aries won clean with a brain buster. So he was happy. He went to the back, and Rude is now, I think, 0-4. He has no points in this thing. He threw a tantrum on the floor. He was throwing furniture around, smashing a monitor on the floor. And uh, only a match back off. And uh, I was very upset about this. Probably this is so good. Yeah, this is so good. And I spent the whole show thinking it was a really, really good show. And I went back over the results. I was like, eh, this is an okay show with a fantastic opener. Well, it's a great match. It was a great match. This is a great match. This is a great match. Homicide is back in town for the uh, exhibition tournament. He met with her in the backstage, and they were all best friends. And then Chavo walked in and wanted to be best friends, and things got awkward. This was the uh, this was the old girlfriend and the new girlfriend saying hi for the first time. So, homicide left. And then Chavo said that he was going to win the X title and Hernandez was going to win the Mount Glory Series. They would meet for the world title next year, and Hernandez thought this was a great idea. Mister Anderson led an Ace of the Mates meeting uh, backstage. In one sentence, they said that. Doc had been so disappointed in Knox's no vote last week that he had turned in his vest and quit the game. And uh, they all agreed to take care of business tonight. Homicide versus P.D. Williams versus, versus Sanjay Butt. They had three, three, uh, three ways in the show. And this was, they were all past, present, or future. And this obviously was the past. A bunch of guys who had been fired from TNA out of match. It was a fine next division three-way. A bunch of guys taking turns doing moves. And uh, I will say that PD, uh, when PD teased the Canadian Destroyer, Destroyer, everyone went crazy, so that move was still over. But he didn't hit it, and then Homicide grabbed him, and he hit a cop killer, and he dropped PD right on his head. Everyone in the building knew PD was hurt instantly. Homicide knew PD was hurt instantly. He made the cover, and Sanjay broke it up. And PD was able to roll outside and was never seen again. I really hope he's okay. This looks very, 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 very bad. Well, I can confirm and that PD Williams is all right, but it did look no good. really scary. It's just no good. And uh, shortly thereafter, Sanjay pinned homicide with a moonsault butt stop, which is also scary. I was appalled that they uh, they spent uh, they were they were plugging this as uh, the like social media impact. Which is fine. They had people backstage tweeting and that sort of thing, but it was too much for me when when Borash is explaining that uh, Sanjay Dutt and Petey Williams have been having a feud on Twitter. It was, it was no more than that. They had been cutting promos with each other on Vine. <laughs> really? I prefer yeah. when I'm told what the problem is, what the issue is, and what each guy said. I do not want to go nope. to Vine or Twitter. To uh, especially in the middle of a match, to find yeah. out what the hell is going on. The next uh, freeway was the was the present. It was Kenny King, Chavo Guerrero, and Manic, who used to be suicide. Now you recall that I think it was 
two weeks ago or three weeks ago, Hulk Hogan came out and said, T.J. Perkins is suicide. He has always been suicide. And then in the show we missed, he came out and said, yeah, I'm suicide, but now I'm manic, but it's still me under the mask. So everyone knows who he is. Everyone knows how he got there. Everyone knows what he's doing. But Jerry, Jerry Morash referred to him as the great unknown. I hope this... Uh, I think it's that's, going, in, going uh, that's in regard to the angle involving Manic. That is the great unknown. I guess. I hope that someday a, uh, a heel bows to unmask him and show his face in the role and we'll find out who's really under there. And then just pretend that never happened. That's or what I, what a, I heel, uh, a heel threatens to unmask him and reveal him to the world. And, and he says, okay. He <laughs> takes his mask off. I am T.J. Perkins. Yeah. Puts it back on. Yeah. Exactly. I'll save uh, you the trouble. Yeah. I am T.J. Perkins. Here's <laughs> footage of me unmasked on this show. <laughs> now let's move on to the real issue between us. Indeed. Indeed. So it looked a lot like the last three-way. Three small men taking turns doing moves. Uh, Kenny knocked Chavo out of the ring with a kick. He threw a big party, but as he was partying, Manic hit him and hit his really weird finisher for the win. Actually, I like this one a lot better than the last one. And uh, this was a 100% showcase of Manic, which is which is good because Manic, uh, spoiler alert, ultimately wins uh, the match next week. So mm-hmm. what a novel concept. You push a guy really hard and then he wins. Great! <laughs> that sounds awesome. They re-aired the same video that opened the show. And Hulk had a meeting with him backstage, and they're sitting there. This was goddamn very hilarious. <laughs> sitting there just very solemnly. Could not even believe and, this. Uh, deep in thought. It's a very intense meeting. They both thought it was a lot on the line, but on speaking. Finally, Hulk takes a breath and he just says, Brother? And I laughed, and I laughed, and I laughed. And uh, he said a little more, and eventually he gave him the same advice he gave Bully Ray. At the end of the night, make sure they rem- remember you and bring the title home. Yeah, hell of a and fucking he... lot of good that did you the first time there, Hulk. <laughs> yes. Talk about and not learning from your mistakes. And they shook hands. When I say they shook hands, this is not like two uh, two peers, uh, you know, slapping hands and showing respect. This was like... When you uh, when you go to your uh, girlfriend's house and meet her dad for the first time, and you have a handshake. That's what this looks like. Me and it Mafia all came out. I don't know why Kurt is wearing the five dollar American flag sunglasses he bought at the toy section of a gas of a uh, toy section of a gas station or something. They look horrible. They all took turns talking shit about the aces and eights. Magnus went last, and he fit right in with the rest of the crew, which is good. He actually got the crowd chanting Mafia, which is a little disturbing. You know, it appears that people really like the Mafia, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bury it too bad. But these goddamn suits, they built it up like they were coming out here to have a fight. They were gonna come out here and have a fight to the death with the main event Mafia. So they came out in dress suits. Am I missing something here? Yeah, they like they like to fight in their suits. <laughs> you like to fight in your suits. Yes. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. And in fact, they fought in their suits. And what happened? I believe they got their asses kicked. They got outsmarted and their asses kicked, and one of them got abducted. Yes. So take the goddamn suits off. I'm fine with them walking around, you know, show up at the building in your suit after your match, take a shower, put on your suit. But like if you're if you're coming out for a gang battle, faction versus faction, it's time to kick some ass. I cannot take these men seriously when they when they do this in a suit. Like, man, we're getting in a fight tonight. All right, meet me in the men's warehouse at three. We'll get ready. Stupid. We'll get some ties. Yeah, well, not even that. Magnus has like a a, a kerchief in his, in his fucking yeah. breast pocket. What? 
So you get re- get ready to fight. You get a silk handkerchief and put it in your breast pocket before you go out there to deliver a beating. Ridiculous. So Anderson appeared on the screen, dared them to come back and fight backstage. The mafia, in their suits. Like a bunch of, in their suits, like a bunch of tools, said, okay. And he went back there to fight. And he got ambushed. And uh, Bully Ray appeared. He threw Kurt into a wall. Threw him into the bed of a pickup truck, and the pickup truck drove away. We had the final exhibition qualifier. This was the future. Rubik's versus Rockstar Spud versus Greg Marichulo. Yeah. That would be Trent Beretta, using, I believe, his real name. Yes, his real name, yeah. And they couldn't even find a way to make it, you know, they, they couldn't find a name that start with M that people could pronounce or spell. Nope. Marichulo. Rockstar Spud is a very, very, very tiny man. He was dwarfed by these other small humans. This is the third free of the show. There's at least two too many. I love an X-Division match where the largest guy in the match, who would be Greg did a flip dive to the outside and landed on the smallest guy in the match, and both yeah. men were nearly killed. <laughs> this, this what like a the shocker! Doing... Who this would have like ever the imagined this could be a train wreck? Yes. Yes. He survived. Yeah, there was that. Um, Rubik's City Coast to Coast dropkick. The director had no idea it was coming. They shot it from the worst possible angle. So you had no idea how far this jump was. And then it was Kane Andrew Spud and uh, Greg and Marichulo in the ring. And Marichulo hit a move that was kind of sort of like the Styles Flash in one. So next week it's Sanjay Dutt, TJ Perkins, and Trent Moretta in their ultimate next match for the title. Hmm. And you said I had sounded excited. <laughs> I like TJ Perkins. I do too. Ray was on the phone bragging about how the mafia had fallen into their trap, which is true and accurate. He told the, whoever he was talking to to take Kurt Angle to the agreed upon location and make it an offer he couldn't refuse. So perhaps Angle will switch sides in this war. Right after that, the uh, pickup truck returned. Angle was driving it. He got out, entered the building. Mickey James is awesome. She cut a promo about how last week there was a segment, on, uh, there was a moment that had changed the face of women's wrestling, had, had raised the bar for women in, in the industry all over the world. And she showed the footage of this incident. It was not, in fact, the latter match between uh, Terrence Torelli and Gail Kim. No, it was Mickey James's concert in some dive bar in Nashville. <laughs> she then compared this, and I am not making this up, to both the moon landing and the invention of the Twinkie. Yeah. The live crowd applauded all this. Gail interrupted in a fantastic dress. If I were Gail's husband, I would ask her to wear this dress every day. She said that uh, her ladder match had been great, and she was taking her belt back next week. And Mickey tried to slap her, but Gail ducked to slap her. And a great cat fight broke out, and the rest came out to separate him. This was an awesome, awesome segment. A lot of buttocks. Well, there's that, too. Yeah, this segment was great. Mickey was awesome. Gail was good. Two heels, always a classic uh, dynamic. And, uh, yeah, Mickey, Mickey, you knew a slap was coming, and so did Gail, so she ducked. So I love a show yeah. where, like, the heels are smarter than the baby faces. Well, they're both heels, so. Yeah. I was <laughs> talking earlier, the, the stupid main event mafia was dumb enough to go backstage and get beat up like idiots. And meanwhile, the yeah. heels are smart enough to know a slap's coming, so they duck and a beating breaks out. Yeah, G- Gail came off totally like, totally like a baby face here. Not, not through any great change of character, but she was the angrier, more aggressive one who rightfully had the great match last week, and she was smarter than Mickey James and got the better of the fight. So yes, that's a baby face. AJ Styles, wait, no, ahead. Uh, Austin Aries ran into Faden backstage. He said that he had beaten Bully Ray, and Saban had beaten him. Therefore, he knew Saban could beat Ray. So he was pulling for him, wished him luck, and he left. 
came off like a total baby face here, and I took this to mean for certain, I would have bet everything, that Austin Aries was going to come out and screw Chris Sabin in the main event. But no, he just wanted to wish him luck. How friendly. Almost AJ cut a promo in a stairwell, wearing a leather jacket and a poor little stairwell, start stairwell, came off like a redneck raven. Said so that next week he was facing Jeff Hardy with a fan favorite and a hero. He said, There's no place for a hero here, and I'm taking my points. And then Chris Haven wrestled Bully Ray for the world title. Let's start with the yeah. bad news. Start with the bad news. If you are uh, if you are one of the twelve percent or so that DVRs impact, it was a really cool finish you didn't get to see. <laughs> they went long. <laughs> And uh, and the the uh, the show cut out on your recording as Oops. soon as uh, as Saban was about to be power bombed, right at Oops. the finish. For everybody That's else fine. who watched live, goddamn, this was a great presentation, great match, yeah. everything about it was awesome. I I enjoyed this immensely, as did the crowd. Everybody on their feet for virtually the entire match. Uh, they did the fancy ring intro, so Borash did double duty. They uh, had Bully, Bully Saban around, and, and Saban refused to back down and, in fact, began to bully Bully around. And he ran wild a little bit early, and then Bully cut him off and went to work on his leg, and Saban sold and sold and sold and sold and sold and sold and sold. Finally made a comeback, big drop kick off the top. Ref took a bump. Saban had Bully Ray pinned with a top rope drop kick. Yes. So they did the uh, illusionary pinfall or the uh, whatever they a visual pinfall so that you thought, God damn, he would have won. But now, you know, he's going to get screwed. So a bunch of geeks hit the ring. There was a big schmoz. Hammer gets thrown in. Uh, Saban uh, stops Bully from using the hammer. Bully cuts him off, goes for a power bomb. Saban bonks him in the head with the hammer, falls on top. Ref wakes up one, two, three. Place just went. Absolutely nuts. Um, it was great. Sometimes, sometimes some of these uh, things in Impact are like hit or miss. Sometimes there's like, you know, obviously the thing with uh, Doc is is wacky because he quit, and you know I, we don't know who's driving the truck. Maybe we never will know. Maybe we will. But sometimes, you know, they they do slow builds on their storylines, and uh, and the Saban thing is is. Uh, it's all made sense, you know. The dude was out for two years. He came back. Uh, they've done the X Division where you where you can trade it in for the title at least once, so it, it's all established. Uh, he is the only guy that is kicked out of the 3D, at least since about 1996. And uh, he was the one responsible for breaking up Team 3D. It all made sense, and they had a great storyline. The match had a great storyline, and so when, when Saban won... Everybody there was invested in the whole thing, and they went crazy. So this was like a, a, an example of a giant TNA success in the middle of, of real-life destruction and turmoil within TNA. Uh, this year was was awesome. Uh, I don't think Saban's going to have the, uh, the title for long. I think August 16th they're doing the rematch in a hardcore match, and probably will lose it back. Who knows? But for this night, this ruled. Well, you liked this a lot more than I did. Uh, I thought a couple things. Uh, I thought Chris Saban uh, completely, he, he forgot the Ricky Steamboat rule. Was, you never take more than three moves without firing back. Hey, punch or something. That is true. He had to, he had to come back. So, but by and large, this is Bully Ray hitting him in the knee and then talking shit for a while. He hit him in the knee. He talked shit for a while. And frankly, I was more entertained by his uh, his uh, uh, trash talk with Rampage Jackson than anything that was going on in the match for a long time. Then Saban finally made his real comeback. It consisted of one enziguri, and then they did a missile drop kick on literally the very next move, and that was the ref bump. Then the brawl broke out. Then all I could focus on was who is going to be working with Rampage Jackson in this brawl, and will they die? And, uh, Turned, turned, turned out to be West Briscoe, and uh, first I felt bad for him, and then watching this brawl, Rampage Jackson's working punches suck. They're horrible. Even shots to the body where you can hit a guy and not kill him. So then, then uh, that all cleared out, 
And that was where I knew went right to the finish after that. It was just saving the hammer and Bully Ray and the ref in the ring. And uh, did the finish, just like you said. And, and yes, by the end, uh, people were going nuts for the finish. It came off like a really, really big deal. But I don't know. Saban, since he came back, uh, we talked about this. He, he did have a great promo last week, but it's not like he's come back and been a house of fire. If he's come back and they've told the story and he's been a random X Division guy who just happened to be holding the belt. And uh, he got the win here, and I was looking at him thinking, well, he's the world champion. But it seems like there's like a half dozen guys who are still bigger stars in this company. So we'll see where it goes. Could be, uh, I don't you know, I don't expect it to hurt business. I don't think it'll turn things around. I think it's just, I think they're going to do it for a while. It will make yeah. no difference whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I did not get into it like you did. It was, it was a big moment right at the finish. I was very happy to see Saban win. But this is, a, as far as guys, you know, as far as career defining moments or, or, or anything like that, or, uh, you know, greatly memorable things, uh, no, I thought I came up short. How in God's name are you going to have a career defining moment in TNA? Yeah, I don't know. You know that's, that's a bad choice of words. But the point being, it didn't see. I don't know. It, it it didn't seem like it elevated him, even within the company where not, wherein nothing ever changes. He's just still uh, the he's still you know outside the top five or six guys, and he just happens to have the world title for right now. For probably about uh, three weeks. Probably, well, yeah. you'll be pleased to know that next week on uh, Impact, you're going to see the return to uh, television and the national television debut of Dean Hill. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see that. And the I'm sad he's is, not playing Dean Hill. No, Dean P- Hill is playing a character that is not Dean Hill at a show in Louisville where every single solitary person in the building knows exactly who Dean Hill is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be excellent in his role. I am too. All right, here's what I'm going to do. You're going to do the impact review. And for every match, I'm going to do an anagram related to somebody in the match. All right. Got that? Okay. Go. First guy is Sting. Good luck with that. You're actually trying Sting? I'm going to do Steve Borden okay. just to make it easier. Good idea. Main Event Mafia came out for a promo. They talked about uh, Chris Saban's title win last week. Sting said that Saban's title win had been one of the biggest nights of his career. Sting's career, mind you. Watching Chris Saban win the world title. Angle then said that that had been the greatest match of Chris Saban's career. This great, The greatest match of Saban's career, his comeback consisted of one kick, a ref bump, then he hit a guy in the head with a hammer. That was his greatest match ever. Mm-hmm. A lot of lies in this promo is my point. They brought Saban out to the ring. Saban, in real time, was cutting this promo less than an hour after he'd won the actual belt. Talking about how, since he'd won it, it was like a dream come true. People in the crowd were laughing out loud at this nonsense. So he knew he had a target on his back. And Samoa Joe and Magnus were in the BFG series and were fighting for a shot at him. Issued a challenge to the winner of the Ultimate X match later tonight for a title shot next week. At this point, Bully Ray came out with the esteemed and honorable Dean Hill. It's been many years since I've laid eyes on Dean Hill. Far too long. Only he was not there playing Dean Hill. He was there to pretend he was Bully Ray's attorney. Fooled no one. He came out and stood there. As he was standing there, the crowd chanted, Dean Hill, Dean Hill, Dean Hill. Then Ray said, this man here is my lawyer. And the fan said, boo. Any news is stupid. The good news is, Dean Hill makes a great evil lawyer. He looks exactly like Kevin Nash, just I, yes. skinnier. A little, little, uh, little more weathered, a little grayer, but yes. He has a full beard now. He used to have a goatee. But he uh, said he was uh, going to sue everyone in the company if Chris Saban did not return the title to Billy Ray. And if, he, if it did go to the courts, he vowed to crush the company because he always won. This was a great promo, I have to admit. That's the end of the segment. All right. The uh, anagram for Sting, Steve Borden, is neat vest, bro. Very, very good. Not too bad. Hogan arrived. He was speaking on the phone and nothing to say to the cameraman. 
in one of the dumbest segments I've ever seen in my life, Manic cut a promo in his costume, but without his mask. What's the point anymore? I don't get this at all. Good promo. Talked about all the bullshit he's been through and re- trying to make it in wrestling. Being homeless and being robbed in Mexico and beaten up in Japan dojos. Homeless? He was homeless at one point. I know that, but I, I, I don't get it. Well, at one point, Brian, he did not have a home. I know, but... <laughs> because he couldn't get a real job because he was training to be a wrestler. I'm sure it was a rough time in his life. Mm-hmm. But um, get a job. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, Do you really wake up at 6 o'clock a.m. and train until midnight? No. You maybe train for a few hours a day, and then you can work. Especially if you've got a family. Oh, yes. maybe, there's an, maybe there's an issue here that I'm unaware of. But certainly the way that he explained it on television seemed to be that he just wanted to train and not work. So, Manic, if you're listening, please explain the situation. I am far more offended by the fact that he cut this promo without his mask on and then came out and wrestled with it. And, and just what, what was the point? He talked about it being a symbol that he believed in. This was stupid. Ultimate X for the X title. Manic, who everyone knows is TJ Perkins, versus Sanjay Dutt versus Greg Marishulo. Started off as your basic random X Division three way. Three small men taking turns doing moves. Marishulo hit Manic with his wacky finisher on the ramp, which appeared to eliminate him from the match. And Sanjay and Marishulo brawled up on the big metal structure above the X. They were actually a good six feet or more above the uh, belt they were trying to get to. They're brawling up there, and Manic returned and began to scale the cables. And I was hoping he would just go scale the cables and get the belt before the other two even noticed he was there. But they saw him. They tried to cut him off, and Marishulo ended up taking a big flat back bump uh, from the uh, cables to the mat. Looked like it sucked. And then Manic got the belt and won. And except for the one move on the ramp and the one giant bump off the cables, it was really just an average X Division three way. Adjust, Tony. That's Sanjay Dutt. Oh, yeah. Also, Natty Judos. That's much better. You know what that means. It's better than Adjust Tony. Bully Ray cut a promo with Ken, and- Ken Anderson. Told him it was very important he win the Bound for Glory series. Then Anderson went out and wrestled Hernandez. It was an average match with a great finish. All the finishes on the finishes on the show were really good. So Hernandez is beating him up. He steps out of the ring. He starts walking up the ramp. He's going to hit his big dive into the ring. And he's stomping. He's clapping. He's waving his arms. And the crowd is getting into it and cheering and going nuts. And he runs all the way down the ramp. And he does this big giant dive over the ropes. And Anderson ducks. And Hernandez lands on his face. And Anderson picks him up, hits his move, and pins him. What a geek. That was awesome. What a complete geek. No knees! Darn! That's Ken Anderson. There's actually a lot of good ones for uh, Ken Anderson here. Do another one. Let's see. Uh, Sneak no nerd. (laughs) Hmm. Snake on nerd. What else do we got here? A lot of them. Let's see. Should I keep going? Uh, sure. <laughs> no, no, dead air is good. Dead air is fine. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of them here. I got to run through them. There are a lot involving arcs. They tried to interview Dixie. She blew them off. Eric Young met with Joe Park. Ask a neon nerd. He showed Park a video on his own iPad. Ken and arson. And arson? (laughs) Ken and arson. It's a command. And a uh, difficult one. Yes. So Eric showed Park the video where Park uh, started bleeding and then snapped and went crazy and got disqualified. He said there's a cost to park 10 points in the series, and he vowed to solve this mystery. Then he left with Joe's iPad. Amazingly, there are almost none for Joe Park. Although it is an anagram for rap joke, as well as jar poke and a jerk op. 
Go on. <laughs> Velvet Sky, looking about as hot as ever, came out for a promo. She said she had made a mistake in trusting Mickey. Now she's going to enjoy watching Mickey. Yeah, she's going to enjoy watching Mickey and Gail beat the crap out of each other. And she sat down at ringside and pretty much did nothing. So, Gail wrestled Mickey. It was two heels having a random match with no heat segment in the third hour of this taping. In other words, nobody cared. I got a fact for you. There is not one single anagram for Velvet Sky. I don't know what to say. Try not a to... single one? Let's try Gail Kim. Do her uh, Twitter tag of Vel Vel Holler. <laughs> there you go. I thought of that. All right, go on. All right. So, uh, yeah, Gail and Mickey Holler? wrestled. Vel Vel Holler. Helv Rev Lol? What does that even mean? I don't know. I think you made those words she up. She apparently has the most difficult name to anagram in the world. It's her Twitter tag. Friends, cats are howling up a storm. Wow, they really are. Uh, bu- 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 bu. So, uh, Odie boos the ref, and she kept enforcing the rules, was pissed off both heels, and finally Gail slapped her, and uh, Mickey then schoolgirled Gail, and Odie B kind of the pin, so Mickey won, and Gail got in Odie B's face after the match, and Rick Hogan came out and announced that uh, ODB was a back to being a wrestler again. And ODB stripped off the tank top with the handprints in the boobs, which apparently had been her ref gear this whole time. Didn't realize that. And uh, Gail backed away. So, yes, that's exactly the same angle they did with Gail and Taryn Terrell, only not nearly as as, as uh, good. In fact, really, 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 really a bad imitation because that was stretched out over, told over two months, and this was done in one segment. Hulk and Dixie had a meeting backstage about Saban. Okay, I found one. Billy Ray's lawyer. I had to use Talia Madison, her real name. Ain't not salami. Salami. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Toad in salami. There we go. That's a good one. That toad is in the, the, the uh, amphibian? Yes, a okay. toad in salami. It's a happy toad. There's a lot of them with mania in it, believe it or not. Not a lot of good ones. So Hulk and Dixie agree that you're going to strip uh, Saban of his title. At least that's the impression we got from this segment. Idols at Mania. Wow. How about that. Go on. Samoa Joe versus Chris Daniels. Oh, there's a lot of them with anal. Oh, unfortunate. Moist anal aid. I cannot believe you just said that. <laughs> What has become of you? You used to have standards for the show. Well, that's the end of this show. You know what's funny? About four hours ago, I was, uh, maybe a little more, I was hanging out with my mom. And How unfortunate. As always, when I see my mom, she's very concerned that I do this show and that I use foul language. Oh. Good news, mom. <laughs> Good news. I am the angel of this one. <laughs> you, I... And I'm um, the nice guy. I didn't say whatever the hell it was you said. I am an idiot, man. Alas. Which also... Which is quite fitting. Is also a uh, anagram for Talia Madison. Wow. I have I have hit my lowest point. <laughs> oh, God. So Samoa Joe and Chris Daniels had a fun match. Don't want to shock anyone. Joe uh, took the whole match where he couldn't put Daniels away. And Anderson ran down to distract him, and Daniels hit the knee, followed with the best moonsault ever. Joe kicked out, and so Daniels just hit it again, and Joe stayed down this time. I love that finish. Guys just keep hitting their finish until it works. This is the most unfortunate name I have ever seen. Go on. <laughs> just give it up for this. I, I can't even... Man... Come on. Sting met with Kurt Angle backstage. They seem to be bickering. I'm honestly not quite sure what about, but they agree that their goal was still to take out Bully Ray and destroy the Aces and Aids forever. Let's see if Kurt Angle is more or less unfortunate. Agent Lurk. <laughs> Lake Grunt. Gut Lanker. Gun Talker. 
AJ Styles versus Jeff Hardy in the main event. Most We're already fun- in the main event? Wow. <laughs> Should I talk slower? Oh, man. there's. Hey, go ahead. You still in Kurt Angle? <laughs> yeah. L Gunk Rat. Gunk? Yeah. Peach is appalled that we're cheating by using foreign languages here. Anyway, yeah, AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy had a really fun match. Um, key to it is that the the noted the announcers noted that since AJ's a uh, sort of pseudo heel turn or whatever the hell you want to call it that he's done, he's changed his move set a lot. He didn't wasn't doing all his flashy moves, but there's glimmers of the old AJ here as he broke out the. Uh, Leapfrog, drop down, drop kick combo, and the Pele kick. And they pointed out that, hey, it's, it's the old AJ coming back. But then, at the end, uh, <laughs> Hardy tried to do the Kofi Kingston's SOS thing, but AJ rolled all the way through it, hooked his cap slicer submission, and won. And then when Hardy offered a handshake, AJ walked out on him. Go on. <laughs> I'm waiting for Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan came out. The first one that comes up here, by the way, is Laugh Honk. Hulk Hogan. Okay. So yeah, Hulk Hogan came out. He told the camera he didn't want to do what he had to do. Yeah, it's time for the main event promo. Ray came out. He said Saban had hit him with the head with a hit him in the head with a hammer. Asked what kind of man would actually do something so vile, so vile and dastardly. Demanded Saban turn over the belt. Saban came out. Before he could speak, Ray said, obviously you are here to do the right thing because you are highly intimidated by me. That was awesome. Saban just said he was out there to see what a fat crybaby Ray had become. Talked about his comeback from two torn ACLs and Ray finally said, I'm going to get my title back and I'm going to do it by suing you. So then Hulk came out. He had the contract in his hands. He said he and his lawyers have been reading the contract all day. Then he just ripped it up and said he was the law around here. Well, that's good to know. If you ever get sued, you can just tear it up and then you'll win. Then, in his very next sentence, he said that this contract that he had just torn to shreds called for Bully Ray to get a title rematch. (laughs) So he was booking it. That may have been a different contract. I really? All Mm -hmm. right. Seems like both would be his contract with the organization. I don't know. I think he tore up the lawsuit and then referenced a contract. Maybe that's it. It hmm. doesn't matter. So he said that Bully Ray would get his con- rematch in a steel cage match against Saban on August 16th. So there's some fun stuff here. I really like the main event match. But yeah, as noted, the last week felt like a big show, and this week felt like the show after a big show. Chris Saban, whose name can be re- rearranged to spell Birch in Ass. In fact, wow, yeah, uh, this show was uh, this show was okay. Uh, the the whole I don't know. It's kind of funny when obviously Dean Hill is not really a lawyer, but let's just pretend he is for the sake of the show. They didn't really have much of a case. In fact, they had no case. Bully wanted his belt back, and they filed a lawsuit. Oh, because he had broken the rules. In breaking the rules, Chris Saban had violated Bully Ray's contract. I see, but wouldn't doesn't Bully break the rules in like every match? Well, yes. Yeah, so there's no legal ground to stand on here. There, maybe, the precedent is against him, that's true. Maybe no one thought to ask Joe Park? Apparently not. Isn't that his role? He's a lawyer? So yeah, I uh, I don't know. I, I wasn't sold on the whole the whole idea of the entire show. Ultimate X match is pretty good. Uh, the TJ Perkins thing where he did the interview unmasked was just completely, absolutely baffling. I did get a kick out of Dean Hill, so that's a thumbs up. Uh, Hernandez and Anderson. Uh, Hernandez came off looking like such a geek. The Velvet promo and the Gale and Mickey match, just disappointing. We've seen a lot of good women's matches in TNA, and this was just a match. And actually, it was with the two best workers in the whole company. Well, as far as women are concerned. And uh, Daniels and Joe was good. Did you mention that it was the first ever win of Chris Daniels over Samoa Joe in the history of TNA? I did not mention that. They, That's they right. It here. I read about it afterwards. And uh, yeah, apparently the, the keywords are in TNA. Apparently Daniels beat Joe in ROH sometimes. 
That's right. So this okay. was the the first ever. So, considering they've been feuding for uh, eight years now, that's still pretty. Yeah. It's a big. Deal. Not a single time in TNA did Chris Daniels ever beat Samoa Joe until tonight, which they conveniently pointed out before the match. This had never happened. The uh, AJ Jeff Hardy match was actually very good, and I don't know what they're doing with AJ Styles. I don't know. I I don't think in in TNA they go into business for themselves. So I'm sure Mike Tay today. Can, Continually mentioning that we were seeing glimpses of the old AJ. It's probably a uh, a tease for something down the road. And then there was the uh, the main event segment. So Joe was all right. It was certainly not as good as last week. I doubt it will get the same uh, rating. Although it does benefit from having a cops lead in, which apparently is the hottest show on television.